Welcome to another episode of Olds Mob 455. Gonna do a little work on the Javelin today. I'm getting ready to replace that front coil spring and take a look at that trunnion suspension. The spring on this side broke at the top. Right now it's sitting at about 24 and 3 quarters. We'll see how much it raises up with that new spring. Here's a look at that broken coil. It's broke right at the very top, so it probably didn't affect it a whole lot, but I'm sure it affected it some. And here's a look at the rest of the trunnion suspension. You can see it has an upper control arm, a lower control arm, like a strut rod, and there's no upper ball joint. It's kind of a bonus on these. There's actually a bearing in here, so no upper ball joint to fail. We're going to put this lower arm under some preload and take the shock out and see uh, how loose that spring becomes. Before I do anything, I'm going to take off this caliper and hang with a piece of wire. And we're just kind of talking about how foreign some of this stuff looks. It's a real thin bolt going through here. It looks like there's a, a spring clip that probably pushes the caliper backwards. Looks like we have some leaking brake fluid here on this caliper. Right away we noticed the bleeder was snapped on the caliper also. Since I'm doing these front springs and taking this all apart, I'm going to put all new bushings in these control arms. It's going to be like a brand new suspension when I'm done. Probably paint everything up too. Here I'm taking out the, uh, the sway bar length so it doesn't limit the travel of the uh, suspension. Looks like this piece just kind of sets up on the top of that trunnion piece here. And this other piece just kind of pushes up on top of the uh, spring tower. So this was at the top of the spring and this was at the bottom and studying these pieces we see that they have like uh, holes or anchor points. We're thinking that this was probably put together with two compressors, one on each side, and these were compressed with the spring. The rotor is off and it looks like there's four bolts that hold this all together. kind of looks like the, these ends were flattened too so they wouldn't come apart. So I got a little lube on there and see if I can zip them apart with the impact. I struggled with getting the bolts out a little bit. Doesn't look like any of them are threaded into the spindle. And I marked up here. That comes off. So no wonder this car is so light. It uh, doesn't have a whole lot of beef to these pieces. Here's the caliper bracket coming off it with a couple spacers behind it. Here I've taken this rod off and I've separated the uh, I believe it's called a trunnion from the lower control arm with a pickle fork with that ball joint there. And I've loosened the two bolts. I'm getting ready to take that out. I'm taking the lower control arm off now by removing this bolt. And you can see with the cam on there that that is their camber adjustment. That bushing back there was completely worn out. Definitely time for replacement. Amazingly, this ball joint is pretty tight up front. I'm going to take the upper control arm off next, and you can see that those bushings are pretty well dry rotted. Those bolts came right out with a uh, couple of wrenches. I'm going to mark them front and rear in case they're directional. See how easily those come up. Bushings are definitely on their last legs there. It's good to catch bushings before they completely go in case you get a kit that reuses the old bushing shell. At a glance, they look identical. When I clean them up, I'll see if there's any further markings on them. I'm gonna take a look at my wheel well here. It's actually in really good shape. There's just a little bit of surface rust up in the corner there. To clean that up, put some rust reformer on there. A little bit where that hinge goes, and one little spot down there no holes. 
all the suspension components for just one side of the uh, javelin. That bushing was worn out. The grease boot was completely ripped apart and it looks like something was wearing on that grease boot retainer. The ball joint is actually still pretty tight though. It's held on by two rivets there. It's also held on by the strut rod when that uh, gets bolted on. I got another one from American Performance here. And since we're rebushing the whole front end, we'll throw a couple ball joints in it. Here's the control arm. It's been wire wheeled, gone over with a sandpaper roll. And before I do the finish cleanup, I'll break the bond on this bushing and get it out of here. Here's my new prothane bushing that does reuse this bushing shell. The prothane bushing also comes with a washer that goes on there to help prevent control arm deflection. To break the bond on this original rubber bushing, I'm going to heat this up a little bit and push it out. You have to be careful when doing stuff like this. I've seen parts go flying under pressure. I'll clean this up and I'll get some rust treatment on this piece and I'll do the same for the upper control arms. Here's an upper. I was trying to break this encapsulating washer system with a hammer and a punch and it didn't want to go. So I'm going to hit with the torch a little bit so you can separate it and then get that bushing out of there. If I had a kit with new bushing shells, I could make a slit in here with a hacksaw and then this bushing shell would easily pull out. Here is the trunnion. I guess this is the upper and the lower part. I do have a bearing kit here. There's a bearing in it right here. In the kit there are some bushings for this mounting point here. Here it's in a vise. You can see it swivels. And there's a nut inside there. I'm going to take that off and see what we have underneath here. Nuts off. I'm just going to work it upwards here. Here it is on the bench. You can see that there's a bushing that goes up through the center of it. The kit did come with a new one. There's a little bit of ovalness to that original bushing, so I decided to go ahead and change it out. This is the setup I'm using on the old press. Here are the majority of the pieces off the car. Cleaned up. Most of them have rust reformer on them right now, a couple are in primer. And this is after hours and hours of wire wheeling and using sandpaper rolls. Here's a look at the wheel well after it was all sandpaper rolled down, treated with rust reformer, and painted with gloss black paint. Kind of gives it a look like there's fresh undercoating on there. 
when in fact it's all still the original undercoating. It was in pretty good shape and I didn't want to go through the effort of scraping it all off. The owner is repairing the trunnion setup in the front suspension. It might be a little odd looking to you, thinking maybe this was like a strut, but it's not a strut. It does have most of the weight on top, but there's a rebuild kit that you get, and he got all urethane parts instead of rubber, so it tightens up all the flex in the suspension. So if you're staying with the stock suspension, this is the best way you can go. So usually, you know, you drop these in here, and then you get like a bolt that fits inside there. You can pound it down, or you get um, a press. You can push it in. All you got to do is just stick it in. That's it. Threaded rod? Threaded rod with a washer and a nut. You can pull it through. There's many methods. If you're having more problems with one, you just switch over to another. You see, I got this reversed. So you're spreading the load out. And then that went in. It just tapped in real easy. These, you know, I just put them in by hand. Then when you go to put this one on, you're going to squirt some of this jelly on there. It, it is the stickiest stuff you've ever seen. So we're going to go through the assembly of this um, trunnion setup. And then you can see how it's a little bit different than a strut, where the strut is built integral with the whole spring unit. On AMC, you've got an individual shock absorber. And then this is a spring setup that needs to be compressed. This O-ring goes on first to keep dust out. Then there's a bearing. And we had to pack it with grease. Then there's a big O-ring. They got instructions on here, you can read them. Then there's a little plastic washer. And this goes through here. That shaft's been lubed up with some of that special lubricant. After you've worked these two pieces together, then there's a recess at the top of the threads. You gotta hang on to this, tilt that. Get it on the thread, put the washer on, put the lock washer on, and there's a crimp locking nut. Okay, so then this has to be torqued, and then you'll see where this whole coil will sit on top of here. And you might ask, why doesn't it ever pop apart? Well, the shock absorber controls how much the suspension droops. So this could never pop off. And that's kind of like a modern day strut, but it's a long time ago. <laughs> he says to be sparing with this because they never give you enough of this um, really strong silicone grease. But this thing has to go in in one direction. There's a shoulder on this side, and this has to go in from there. <clears throat> So when that's in, then this little collar will be on this side and then you won't get it deflecting inside the body. Alright, we've got another hooker header issue here that shows, in my judgment, poor engineering because whoever had the car that was their demonstration model or their prototype model probably had it set up with the nut further out but let's say if you ever had to have it adjusted you can see where it's gonna the nuts gonna be binding right into the pipe to alleviate the situation we're gonna machine all this off from here down there's no thread even on here anyway 
So we're just going to eliminate that one eighth and then go another eighth to about here. Then we'll miss the pipe. Here's a look at the nut after it's been faced down some. As you can see now, the lower control arm bolt can have full travel and it doesn't make contact with the header tube. And you've got a torque arm and you got these bushings that go on here. It's got this in the kit, more of this grease. After discussion, we decided we're going to go with the old system because there's a shoulder on here. Because this, you'd have to use a washer or something. And these are a lot nicer. So we're going with stock. Kind of takes the guesswork out of it. So you see the shoulder holds this curved washer. This goes the same thing. Then you got the, the bracket on the frame. And then when you push this through, you put the nut on it. So as this thing, you know, would wobble around, there's a little bit of movement can go on. We've got the strut arm and the lower control arm on. We have to put the bottom of the trunnion on. Now we're going to compress the spring and get it up into the pocket. To do that, we might end up pivoting this trunnion in with the spring when we assemble it and then land the bolts. This is a spring compressor that was made for getting the springs in above the trunnion. There's many different ways of making spring compressors, but this seems like most obvious. When it's all in tension, a lot of people make multiple piece devices to hang onto the spring so it can't kick off. This is the dangerous part. When you've got this thing in, in compression, there's been guys that have gotten knocked in the head and this will keep it from kicking out. All it was was a bolt that was turned down. It fits in these holes in the, in the spring pockets. And as we tighten up these nuts, this is just a piece of tubing. I'm going to plate with a bolt in there that fits in the hole. And as we tighten these down, we're going to compress this so it gets down to a diameter or a, a length that we can get it up inside the pocket. As this thing gets compressed and it gets smaller, this thing is free floating so it can go all the way up into here and still, you know, the spring can't kick out at you. So the reason we didn't have any uh, video of getting this in here is because it was all hands on deck. And anybody that doesn't seem the least bit concerned about taking a compressed spring and squeezing it in and trying to get these parts together, if they aren't concerned, they're a fool because this is a potential bomb. Anything that, you know, could bump it or something or if a piece would break, if this compressed spring would hit you, it'd be history. But this we made as strong as possible. We had pretty much faith in having it hold up, but it's still hard to get all these parts pulled down, stretched in, and into the pocket. It's a job. I would call the difficulty level on this, if you were doing it in your own driveway, without a lift, it would be a 10. So another safety issue here that we don't want anybody else to ever go through, when I was telling you before how you've got the spring, you know, it could be a potential bomb, we're lowering it down and thinking that it's in the pocket. Well, you have to have a certain distance or this thing will come out of the pocket. So as you're lowering it down, don't just be using any kind of power tools with a you know makeshift deep socket or something that you're because it'll pop out and even with this all bolted together, it can kick out and be a bomb coming at you. So we're gonna have the shock in here first. To limit the travel then when we lower it down it can't disconnect right here between this cup and this trunnion. Here's a look at where this is right now to get the idea of how this works. I'm going to note that the lower control arm bolt 
this trunnion anchor bolt and the two upper control arm bolts aren't torqued down yet. That'll be done when there's uh, the weight of the car on it. Here's what's left, some brake components, that arm it for the tie rod, the spindle. This will all go together in one shot. Here's a look at all that assembled. I did put some Loctite on these four fine thread bolts. The rotor that came off here definitely seen better days. It's got quite a rust ridge on the outside. I'll repack those bearings with one of those packers. I will be doing the brakes in this car all the way around. Really the brakes and steering are the most important things on a car. When this rotor gets replaced, the bearings will get replaced with it. I knelt on it a couple times and uh, I'm getting about 27 to 26 and 3 quarter. It's going to settle more when I drive it around and when I hook up the sway bar I'll probably draw it down a little bit. And I still got to put the spring on the other side. Here's the general stance of the car right now. I suspect that front end will drop down a little bit more once I start driving it around.